What's up? This is Windows of Lucidity from Access Hollywood. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna read off some questions here. The first one is, what the fuck is our name? Windows of Lucidity. So how did we get that name? Who wants to answer that? You do, do you? Like, hey. <laughs> yeah, 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 you do. Okay. What the hell you All right, yeah, about? yeah, okay. So technically, I made this name. Uh, the reason, or where it came from, in the world of psychology, when someone has like a, a neurological illness, like dementia, they're crazy most of the time, but when they hit a moment of reality, it's called a window of lucidity. So that's where our band name comes from. I just educated all the viewers. <laughs> all right. We, yeah, had a previous, we had a previous band name. Yeah, it, yeah totally. We I were think, once upon time raised by a wolf. I think eventually we'll get to that oh, okay, question. Cool. <laughs> so two, what genre are you? Uh, uh, that's that's a good question. There you go, Michael. I would describe it as Marxist synth pop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Dylan, what would you say are, are uh, uh, Well, we have elements of like gen and metalcore, kind of progressive metalcore. We tend to uh, not repeat a lot of our riffs, uh, don't have a lot of choruses, and we try to avoid breakdowns as like a, the main focus of our songs. So, yeah, yeah. So like, a, I'm trying to be heavy but bring something to the table that people can listen to on a regular basis. We want the melody we want the melody to be the forefront mm -hmm. and then the heaviness to yeah. just kinda go along with the music and the progression of the songs. I would say to the general audience we're probably metalcore, but like progressive metalcore with all those influences. I, I can't speak for all of us here, but yeah. my intent with Windows is always to not necessarily be a day to remember, but do what it, uh, with metal what a day to remember did, which is kind of bridge people um, that don't normally listen to mm -hmm. like metal music. I want them to be able to take in some of our music and say, oh, there were parts of that I actually enjoyed. Maybe I'll kind of give more metal a shot because it's not necessarily what I thought it was. A lot of people have kind of bad like, stereotypes Stigmas. about like yeah. what they think we might sound like. But. So this is a good question. Question number three, how and when did you all meet? So this is when it comes into the our old band. Uh, Dylan and I used to be in a band called uh, Raised by Wolves. Mm -hmm. Um, we were playing in our garage one day, and then we heard this bam, 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 bam. So we were like, oh, what the fuck, it's the cops. And so we opened the garage door, and this ginger motherfucker was <laughs> like, dude, you guys sound fucking good. <laughs> you guys need a bass player? It was the only metal band in town. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was impressed, but there wasn't a wide selection. And, and yeah, and then, uh, and then I, what, you, yeah, and then I just, uh, I moved over to Monterey in 2010, and these guys were a little bit older than me and just got introduced. Actually saw their old band play over at CSUMB um, and uh, really liked the vocals, loved Dylan's vocals, loved the music and everything. And actually was gonna start a side project with Dylan while they were doing their other band and then their other guitarist kind of left. So they needed another, you know, kind of spark to their band. So I kind of joined and then we kind of like reinvented ourselves and changed change the, name. Change the yeah. name, changed the music kind of just the writing style and everything and just kind of went from there. Yeah. Uh, CSUMB, if people don't know, it's CSU Monterey Bay and like it's kind of uh, cool because none of us are from Monterey but um, we all met at the university there and um, we formed this project together and that place has a metal famine too. So. Yeah, there's yeah, like very, no, there's very, almost like no music out there in general. No so. music. Yeah, Alright, uh, question number four, when did you first start playing? I feel like we answered that kind of in question number three. We've been, a, we've been when our uh, We've yeah. been in this band for about five years now. Yeah. Five years. Yeah. Um, question number five: When will you we see your next album? Nice. Dude, that's a good one. We just finished marketing. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just finished up our album actually today, or at least uh, all the instrumentals, the instrumentals for, it, yeah. for it. And uh, he's actually going to go in in two weeks and lay the vocals down. Should be out in probably a couple months. We're hoping before our July first show in um, Monterey because we're you know it's a hometown, and so we're trying to. You know, get our CD out there. So yeah. and it's it's fully like done by us, and that like we're printing all the CDs ourselves. We're doing the artwork ourselves. Um, we're hoping to have like a full like art booklet with all the lyrics and all that good stuff in it. Um, but we've we've taken the liberty to like try to cut out as many other people as we can and, and do this project um, with ourselves to to get our vision out there. Recording with Connor Haynes from Mugshot. Though. Yeah, shout out to Connor. Shout out to Connor. 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 We're not doing that part ourselves. And <laughs> too long didn't watch. Beginning of the summer. This one's coming out. Check out our band camp and our Facebook. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, six. Any tips? Just the tip. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, any tips? Well, I mean, I would say for a band, we've probably been together. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of major label bands that have been together for a long time, but 
as a as a, I guess an underground band, we've been together for I would say significant quantifiable. I've time. seen I've seen many bands that we've played with that have you know come in and faded out, started new projects, faded out, and I mean there's definitely other bands that are doing it. Um, we still have a long ways to go. It's only been five years. Take your time with it. Create something uh, unique and new. Don't try to sound like your favorite bands. Maybe take some elements of whatever, add it to your own style. But um, I, I don't think you can make it very far if, if you're doing what everyone else is doing. So do something that you like yeah. to do. And, uh, and, I think and jam with friends. Yeah, you know? one, yeah. one thing we, oh, we've always done is make sure to, to pour our passion into the music, but not let our passion of wanting to be known or wanting to be heard overcome our passion for just wanting to make music and enjoy it, you know? Yeah. Um, seven, crazy or funny story. Anyone got crazy or funny stories? I have one about Michael. Yeah, okay. Go <laughs> <laughs> Michael and I uh, used to live together in this big oh, house, no. and uh, I, oh, I didn't no. really know Michael other than band practice, and so like one of the first times Michael ever got really drunk around me, um, I had a bunch of my paintings um, hung up in this house, and Michael kind of like bumped into it, and I was jokingly giving him a shit. I was like, what the fuck, bro? That painting's worth a lot of money, which it wasn't. And um, he was, oh, I'm so sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. I just, just hit me, hit me. Like, make it up. Just hit me. That'll, that'll make up for it. I was like, dude, I'm not going to fucking hit you. Hit me, bro. You got to hit me. And he's like, he's almost like pushing me, and he gets to the point where he shoves me. <laughs> But he dislocated his own shoulder in the process of doing that. So like he pushed me and fell in the back and was like, "Oh, my arm! <laughs> Something happened to my arm!" You know? And like one of our roommates came and like popped his like arm back in place. But it was just a really random, funny moment that I can remember. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I we're not we're sorry, Michael. I had to tell this. As you can tell, I forgot about that. Most of it I don't remember. I haven't been that drunk since. And yeah, yes, I haven't. Been, yeah. and I haven't been years ago. That was like four years ago. Uh, yeah, well, I haven't. And I also haven't just, and I haven't dislocated my shoulder oh, okay. since then either. So. Nice All right, well there you go. Uh, yeah, that, was, that was good. To I have again. one more story. It's about Michael. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All of our stories are about Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Michael just, had scarlet fever at one point in his life. <laughs> Which he was just covered from head to toe in like these like neck, neck, like, neck to toe. Yeah, neck to toe. Sorry, <laughs> his face was beautiful. Um, Thank you. But um, he had this like rash all over his body, and he was he wasn't really that self conscious about it. I, if I would have been, if I would have had it, but this guy was pulling. Well, maybe I shouldn't say. They say <laughs> okay. They say it was the most promiscuous promiscu phase of my life, and I was covered in a rash from neck to toe. I don't know. And he, he it was amazing. They say that bases don't get girls. We're all about that was it. bullshit yeah, because you had us. <laughs> I'm never. Yeah. Yeah. He this was guy, the bassist once upon a time. That was the bassist. He was the bassist. Bass guitarist, bassist and guitarist, and then now I'm just guitarist. Yeah. Yeah. Now we don't have a bass. We're still trying to find a way to bridge a guitar neck and a bass neck. Oh, we're just gonna change our name to the bassist. Uh, so question eight is how long have you been a band for? We've answered that, but I'll answer it again. It's five years? Five. Yeah, five years. Summer, I think it'll be five years. Yeah, Maybe question nine. Wall of death or circle pit? Mm -hmm. uh, circle pit. Oh. Nobody's ever done either for us. Yeah. <laughs> circle pit though. We're happy. We don't have circle pit or wall of death. Songs. Songs. I don't know. Yeah, yeah but like I mean I guess severed but severed head or yeah, yeah, I've some wall of death, yeah, it like takes a lot of work, you know. Like, you, you, you gotta <laughs> be all, you gotta be all Moses. You just <laughs> let people just do what they do and I, then uh, circle pit is more authentic. Alright. Yeah. I like the wall of death. I'm, that's me. I don't know. Right, well, I, I like to be in a wall of I'll death. I'll settle for chicken I, I would watch a wall of death too. <laughs> <laughs> Bring chicken nuggets to our show. Oh, <laughs> oh my god, I really like some chicken nuggets. Uh, sing along or breakdown. Breakdown. Mm. I feel like we fall in the you middle of all of these questions. Yeah, yeah we right. tried to... Over a sing-along? We don't have a sing-along. We don't have sing-alongs sing -along. sing or breakdowns. Well, we've just recently started breakdowns, so... Realistically, what... Both the questions are for like both for you and what do you like to play? Oh, I see. Ah, okay. I'm okay. always down for a good breakdown. I, I, if I'm in the car, yeah. 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 It's, it's always, in, it's always a breakdown. Starbucks yeah. parking lot, breakdown. <laughs> yeah. if, I, if I'm in traffic, it's <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Starbucks parking lot. Yeah. Like, like is, it, is it like what city do I have in my car? Like Kesha? Then yeah, sing along. <laughs> Although her breakdown is pretty sick. I listen to Kesha for the breakdown. Her breakdown is pretty sick too. She really doesn't sing right now. We'll talk about it. Uh, rush pits or dancers? I would say dancers, like hardcore dancing, right? Yeah. yeah. It's a push pit. Oh, well, okay, so oh, yeah. that pee has a small leg growing out of it. <laughs> yeah. push pit. Well, rush pit. Rush I never pit. said I was good at writing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, push pit or dancers? Push pit's just like, uh, yeah, just a little Oh, yeah. Bit. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm up for both. If I just wish dancing could be done a little safer, 
and even dancing itself is not bad. It's just the crowd killing is the problem. Yeah, it I like, kills our genre. I like the like, finesse of dancing when you see those people that like look like space ninjas. And yeah, when people are busting backflips into like yeah. windmills, yeah. you're like, Fuck, Jake the Jedi. I wish I could do that. Jake exactly. the Jedi. Yeah, exactly. But when people are just crowd killing or trying to Jake hurt specific it's people, it yeah, doesn't it, make dude. sense to me. Yeah, yeah, I got a bloody good. nose in one of my first shows in middle school from just oh. a regular old nosh pit. I would rather have that than a like leg in my face. Like I would, <laughs> yeah. like, I would just rather just deal with. I need to interject. I'm going to story about Michael. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, he knows what's coming now. We played a house show at Trevor's house, and uh, Michael was drunk again. Coincidence. Um, he wasn't maybe as drunk as the next time, but no, no. Um, I didn't listen nobody to was moshing, now. and Michael started a mosh pit in his backyard, and um, Michael got pushed out of the mosh pit, and drunkenly like, ran back into the mosh pit with his head down, just like going for whoever was there. And everyone saw him and got out of the way, except for this one girl, unfortunately. And Michael totally tackled this girl, but she was a trooper. She got up and she like kept moshing and stuff. So and then he probably hooked up with her later. Yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so season one of Like Mike, the reality show. <laughs> and then no, and then, right, and then during that mosh pit, I was moshing around, and there was like a brick or something oh, right, on, yeah. in, the, in the ground, and I was like, someone's gonna trip over this. Maybe they'll dislocate their shoulder. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so I grabbed it, and and I didn't see this, but one of you told yeah, me that was... everyone thought I was gonna. Throw yeah. it. Like, oh, it's just moshing. <laughs> so I moved it out of the way, like, really carefully, and then, like, went back to moshing. Like, well, I, you had already tackled the girl at that point, so it was, like, nobody knew. Yeah, and you were an anarchist. So everything like, anarchist was threw a brick through a window. Yeah. Yeah. There was no Starbucks or Bank of America around, so I couldn't throw a brick through anything. <laughs> so I, t I moved it out of the way. Then I moved it out of the way. I don't know. That seems reasonable. Well, I want to erase that part. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, all right, number 12, Guilty Pleasure Song. We'll just start from the left. Ooh, that's a tough one. I don't even know. Guilty Pleasure Song? Trevor, spit it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, dude, anything Sade, I love Sade and the r and I love anything that she puts out. That's random as fuck, but I'll blast that motherfucker. All right, turn off the interview now. After, after, <laughs> after listening to the live, I'll listen to Thotter's Murder and then throw on Sade. <laughs> they are yeah, Sade. Okay. Uh, I like me some Nora Jones, like um, when I want something that's completely the opposite direction. Anything. Mine's anything plain and simple. It's a classic. It's called Lifestyle by Young Thug. <laughs> yeah. It's really fucking Play good. <laughs> the composition is beautiful. The rap video is made with a lot of thought. Um, and it slaps. There you go. Uh, Michelle Branch. Oh my god, I love Michelle Branch. Uh, I can't think of any song or anything off the top of my head, but when I hear it like in the store, I'm like, you can't be strumming and singing. Like, it's just... You know you don't want to say Kesha. <laughs> no, that's not a guilty pleasure. I'm not, I, have, I feel no guilt about that. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, Michelle Branch, I wouldn't normally... Like, give that information out, but it's part of the, you know, it's it's possible, so. it's down there. there. That's cool. Okay. This is what the worst thing that's been said about me about That's true, right. yeah, there's probably more to come. The final question is, what is your inspiration? Um, I would imagine we probably want to do this individually, so you want to start, Trevor? Uh, yeah, in high school, I mean, August Burns Red, one of my all-time favorite bands. Just them, old school metalcore, Kill Switch, I love all that. Um, just pretty much... Any metalcore genre back in the day. I even like shit, Atreyu. I have a bunch of Slipknot, all so many. Pantera, especially Dimebag Daryl. Definitely one of my biggest influences. Um, kind of all over the place, but everything from like Nirvana, Rage Against the Machine, Queens of Stone Age, all the way up to um, like Slaughter to Prevail and Spite and like A Persian's Crown, The Contortionist, all kinds of crazy stuff. So my, I, I'm pretty much open to anything. I don't listen to any like country really past like the early 90s but pretty open to all music I like um, starting with the older timeline first mine would definitely be Hawthorne Heights there we go yeah that's what I'm talking about and then somehow I progress to uh, this band has multiple pronunciations Alicia Alicia Elijah I got this sick ass tattoo uh, when I was younger from that um, and then I guess when I'm listening to music I'm always listening to the drums obviously so big inspirations for me would be the north lane drummer minus the new album shout out to that shitty album um, uh, and then uh die artist murder um and then just recently invent animate that drummer has made me question my sexuality uh influences inspirations like yeah inspirations. Uh, i guess technically you could even go that's outside of music Say. Well, in that case, McFlurry's from McDonald's. McFlurry's <laughs> abolishing industrial civilization, <laughs> definitely. Uh, and uh, music that's like 
in, like in, in, interesting that like pushes things in any way or creates an interesting combination. I mean, like Tool, the Sugar, Animals Leaders, mm -hmm. Will Jarta, and anything that just pushes things in a, in a really unique direction. Um, as far as like, I didn't, I thought I didn't like metalcore, and then I heard Elitist, and I was like, oh, we actually do like metalcore. Mm -hmm. uh, so that like was really big for me. Um, finding them, you probably found. No, actually, I, I heard them on the radio, and then you showed me more of their stuff. Uh, and I don't know, anything that really pushes the boundaries without being too like weird. I mean, I like some weird froggy stuff, but nothing like that weird. Uh, <laughs> weird, but not that. No, weird, but, you know, like between the bear and me, or oh, like, okay. you know, I mean, that's like, it's pretty wacky. Or contortionist is kind of like, but like, there's like, yeah. pushing things in it, but like, it's not so outward. Like, I'm not really into like Frank Zappa frog, like, mm -hmm. that or whatever. I don't know, it's cool. But, uh, you know, things that are like, things that are pushing things in an interesting way without getting too wacky. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It's gonna happen. All right, so that's and the And then the I got like two more. Yeah. Um, well, for one, who is your local inspiration? Local inspiration? Uh, like a local act inspiration. Oh, local inspiration. Local inspiration. Oh, that's <laughs> tough. I have so many fucking friends who play some cool music. Um, Dude, it's gotta be Aether. I love Aether. Ever yeah. since I saw Aether the very first time, I mean, Garrett and those guys, they just, they Easy. rip it. I mean, I yeah. saw, again, I saw them at <laughs> this, uh, Cal State Monterey Bay. And they were only at that time, I think, a three-piece band: Garrett, Josh, and their old vocalist Cody. Mm -hmm. And they blew me away. I didn't. I mean, I had yeah. to go look up Aether and Garrett, and then I met them later on. And I mean, they've always been one of those bands where everyone is so good that you can never <laughs> specify who is carrying the band. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that, that's. I mean, I would say like my three favorite locals aside from Aether would have to be. Uh, I really love Raft from Antigua. They're like my hometown. Those guys are amazing. Um, Peasant Hands is a band that not a lot of people know about at the moment, but are awesome. They just were recently signed, um, so hopefully people will check them out. And uh, my dudes in Every Hand of Trade are awesome as well. Yeah. Uh, also, for me, recently we just played with um, One Vote for Violence. Oh, yeah, yeah they, they were, were sick. fucking sick. They were so yeah, sick. Yeah, the yeah, low end right there. Uh, really shaking bass. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was so sick. And then Raft is a big one for me. And then early on, they don't exist anymore. When we started playing in Salinas, Diana. Oh yeah, they, no, they, yeah. they like we really just blew my mind. That was when we were raised by wolves, and we were, like we didn't know what we were doing. Shout oh, out I'm to Trevor wasn't around, so he doesn't get any blame. But like, <laughs> yeah. and I don't know. You could do metal drums, but and you can do metal vocals. But I was like, I don't know how to play metal at that yeah. point. And I saw Diana, and I was like, what? A band yeah. from like our neighbors backtracking and everything. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah Diana, Diana was definitely uh, when we first started. I think that yeah. they were a huge influence. Shout out, shout and out then, to the like I said, I got oh, another yeah, one. Asterion. Asterion, shout out to those guys. Oh, those guys are fucking heavy. Been playing shows with them that's since the first day local one. So. Band that I yeah, 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 that's the yeah. All right. And then the last one that I have is, uh, what's the worst and best show you've ever played? Show. Oh, we're shows. No, dude, no way. The boat. Not Long Beach. Yeah, the boat? Was, no way! That was fuck that. Dude, we, we had, had, we had, we had show? more people at the Long Beach show, surprisingly. Yeah, okay. That's so because they just threw we, kids in there. We played like, on the hey, St. Mary. No. It was a giant music festival on the Queen. And we were so stoked. Mary, uh, <laughs> we were so yeah, stoked. We were so stoked. I was pretty stoked. We were going to open up for As Blood Runs Black. Oh, and right. Carnifex. And, yeah. and really bad acoustics, so music was getting melded together horribly. But we were in this like right time, right place situation where this super goth band that was more concerned about how many spikes they had on their wrists played before us, um, and no one was interested in that. So they set the bench really low or the bar <laughs> really low. So when we played, we had, I mean, more people watching us than I had seen. Yep. Yeah, for most of the bands that were playing in that festival. And, and, and we like had big banners and we were like marching around. We had our yeah. Master Shake banner and so I that had was my not our worst show. Yeah, that was not our worst show. Okay. That was that was yeah, that's that was worst a hidden venue. diamond. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay, hidden diamond, okay, whatever. <laughs> that's yeah, okay. Uh catalyst I would say is our worst show. Yeah, we got yeah, we I mean yeah, that we got like a lot of, and I would only say that they are our worst shows, not because of how we performed or how we were received, but like by how the show was organized. It was basically pay to play, like sell certain amount of Yeah, tickets. we had never really tried to do anything. And it was like, like a whole bunch of pop punk bands, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just yeah. Kind of like yeah. not bulky rock and yeah. pop punk. And we were like told we... our set time like when we showed up, so it was like even though we were promoting it, we didn't know when to tell our friends to get there, and so like we basically played to a few of the other bands that were there that night, and it wasn't. I mean, I've always wanted to play the Catalyst. Um, 
Yeah, we were I stoked. We were stoked to play the Catalyst, and I love playing in the Atrium, or I mean, I would love to play the big stage. But yeah, we were just expecting a little bit more of a turnout, and it kind of just didn't work out. That I mean, way. There were two metal bands, and it was like us who opened, and then like one of the last bands. Yeah, yeah. you just can't. We were it's told, not a good show. It's we were not told a good show. that you didn't have to sell any pre-sale tickets, but then when we got there, we found out that the pre-sale tickets you sold determined how you got to choose where you wanted to be in the lineup. Yeah. And our buddies in Infinite Sleep showed up. And uh, they didn't have any pre-sale tickets sold, unfortunately. But like they were still supposed to be able to play, and then they were turned away. Like yeah, that show, yeah, so it was just like a. It was just not even on the show. Yeah, it's not. It's just not. Let's, let's not move on to positivity. Yeah, sorry. Our best show. All right. <laughs> Wait, you still gonna do the best show? Yeah. All right, sorry. I thought you. I thought. I thought. I thought you did the best show. But <laughs> no, 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 all he did was convince us that the, the, the oh, show was not the worst. Show. Right. Well, like I guess not our I think best. Washington Street show, I would say. Yeah, the the Selena's house is always the really Selena's, good to us. Yeah. Dude, the, the Selena's house. house. But I was thinking about oh, your guys' shit, house. Oh shit, the house show. Yeah, so we threw this when we first really started. Cool. We threw this huge party. Well, our roommate threw a birthday party. We hijacked. I mean, we were invited. And we anyway, we had a big old lineup. We were doing a house show, and we had legit. DJ lights, fog machines, yeah. like a lasers, 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 everything, and yeah. it was all my buddies. Keep in mind that this house show was actually like in kind of like a big mansion house. It wasn't really like a weird old yeah, it, was it, was it was mostly people that didn't house. listen to metal, but when we were slamming, they were, or when we were jamming, they were slamming. <laughs> <laughs> there were probably like 200 people in the house. Yeah, yeah everybody was just on like the room. Like, like, yeah, we had one guy uh, <laughs> not not watching our set, but like was out in the back room playing beer pong and was drunk and, and got on the roof. Jumped off the roof and rolled out successfully, and some other drunk guy tried to do the same thing and like got seriously hurt and like had to go to the hospital. People were shooting off fireworks. The cops came. So our best show, everyone had to go to the hospital. Yes. (laughs) Yes. But it wasn't our fault. It was outside. We don't have to go to the hospital. I actually, I actually have one more question. I'm sorry. How in the world did you get like probably the best idea to throw in Master Shake <laughs> in 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 your song? I, and oh, and, yeah. and what what is the song of course? Uh, it's current it's currency, yeah. For what we had, uh, I I love Aquatina. I'm forced to put that out there. It's uh, fucking I, awesome. I do I do the art for our band and whatnot, and so I created a, a logo. It's um, on my bass drum. Yeah, it has Master Shake, and he's got like snake bites and gauges, and he's wearing a tank top with the windows logo on it. Um, and I don't know, so we had that logo, and then we were recording our, an old demo, and we put uh, this clip of Carl playing like air guitar to some prostitute, like yeah. in the background of it, and then uh, it was just kind of funny, and it stuck, and we ended up like using Master Shake for like another song, I think. In the future. A lot of our a lot of our first CD songs are based off characters, so I yeah. think we just kind of ran with the whole characters thing, and kind of like yeah, that's and who of, doesn't like Aqua Team? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're yeah. metalhead, you don't like Aqua Team of course. You know, yeah. Yeah, if you like, go like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll like it. You'll like it. Batman, yeah. Zelda, yeah. And, like we we wrote about all those like kind of in a story in each song, and that was kind of a cool concept that I'd like to revisit eventually. Um, I just didn't want to kind of overdo it, so none of the new album is based on any characters at all. It's a little more um, has a little more direction to to the lyrics, but um, we're all we're all huge anime and gaming fans. So. Well, I don't know if he's playing. Well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, hentai. Video games. Hentai. <laughs> <laughs> that's shit. Yeah, forgot about that one. Yeah, we love talk. anime. Sorry, we love anime. If you want to talk politics? I don't like, you go to these two video games. This guy. It's okay. Don't ever be afraid to be a gamer. The wolf or a, a nerd, because the wolf and the hound, how they got their name was because of the Game of Thrones. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm a nerd. Like I, like, I'm reading like every Star Wars novel that comes out, and like I'm a nerd. And then writing his own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I'm a nerd. I'm just a Star Wars nerd, not an animator. I mean, just, just pick your nerd up. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh yeah. So the last part is. Uh oh, I lost the page. Oh, we're supposed to say what our name is. So we are Windows of Lucidity, and thank you for the interview. Yeah, dude, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Shout yeah, out to Pin Up Productions for I mean, hosting most of our yeah. shows that yeah. we play at. Yeah. Yeah. Shout yeah. out for all those guys, Justin and Joel, always you know giving us shots and stuff like that. You know, putting yeah. us on good shows and matching us with you know pretty good talent around here. We appreciate every show we've ever been able to play, whether it's to like nobody or a bunch of people. Like we play every show like like how we always want to play it and that's like giving it all yeah. so, and then so. shout out to Gatorade, Sprite, McDonald's, <laughs> Taco Bell uh, for the sponsorships or yeah. future sponsorships shout out to it never <laughs> 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 that's a little funny. we're full throttle <laughs>
Or full throttle, whatever you yeah. yeah. Shout out to the Salinas area. Oh, yeah. 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 Salinas. Salinas. Yeah. Salinas. Salinas. Yeah. We, we, we probably, we, yeah, Salinas. we probably would not. Being that we're from the Monterey Peninsula, and considering there is no metal in the Monterey Peninsula, we thrive off of the Salinas community. Yeah. And yeah, people need to realize that there's a really good like music community yeah, yeah, in Salinas, and, and yeah. that there's a lot of passionate people out there that are hardworking and that have you know done a lot to bring each other up. And that, that scene, we've seen the scene grow from when I came in. I didn't know anybody, you know, and no, no, you know shows being so small to not even having a venue because they're getting shut down to now being able to play you know shows like this, having house shows in Salinas, having you know venues a little bit more open up for the whole scene. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, and one thing I'd like to mention in that regard is that like I grew up in the Central Valley and I was involved in like a Modesto Stockton like metal scene, and then moving out to Monterey, like we started going to like Santa Cruz, San Jose, um, and then like went so far. Yeah, yeah, and like seeing all the different scenes, like there's a lot of like violence and like kind of uh, almost like segregation in the metal scene to like people who are new to coming in in some of those areas and like Salinas is like the one spot where like it's like a family setting like you yeah. can go to any show out there and like meet tons of really nice people they're always not trying to hurt anybody in the pit they're always picking each and other it's up because the promoters and the people that create those shows are trying so hard to make that a thing with the Salinas yeah. community because I mean the city of Salinas has such a bad reputation it's entirely possible you don't, you don't that our metal community could just be a direct reflection of what's wrong with the city of Salinas but the, the people that create the metal shows in Salinas and put them together have done a really good job of making it a family style. Staying positive, yeah, yeah. always good vibes, and they don't let anything, you know, they don't, they don't mess around on that, you know, so. All right. So are we too elaborative for interviews? <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys are, you guys are the best. Yeah, I'm going to end it. All right, here we go. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah. Windows of the City. Check out our music on Bandcamp. Yeah, our city should be out pretty soon, so. Yeah.